Hey guys, welcome back. So as always, if you're new to this YouTube channel and you're watching this, our videos for the first time, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, QA Script. It's not difficult to find. Just type QA Script on the YouTube search page and you will land on the U QA Script YouTube channel. Just hit on the subscribe button so that whenever we post a new video on any topic or tool, you will get notified on your YouTube page or on your email. So coming to our um, next topic, which is REST API, right? So we'll be looking at what is REST API? What are the different REST API methods which you can use while working on REST APIs? And the basic differences between the most two popular APIs, which is the SOAP and the REST API. Now it is also one of the most popular interview questions. So please take a note of that. Coming to REST API, uh, the REST stands for representational state transfer, right? So basically it, it is REST API is a set of rules um, through which this API can be used across the applications, right? So in order to for an API to be RESTful, it has to uh, follow some certain rules, right? And these are the five rules which every API, REST API should follow. So the first rule is every REST API should be stateless in nature. Now, what do you mean by stateless, right? So on a client server architecture, if the client is sending any particular request to the server, it has to be a new request every time, right? So that means the client needs to provide all the information, right? So all the different headers, all the authorization information to the server every on every request. So the server cannot store any information which is it is um, receiving from the request, right? So the client needs to do that uh, and uh, the server cannot store any kind of state for that particular API. Um, to process the next APIs. So every request APIs should be independent of each other, right? So that is the meaning of stateless. So um, the next is uniform interface, right? So the client and server communication should happen over a common protocol, which is HTTP, and it should use the URIs, right? So, and the CRUD, which stands for create, read, update, delete, and the JSON conventions, right? So these are um, some uniform interfaces through which the client and server should communicate with each other. Then coming to client server, right? So the client and server should be independent of each other, right? So the changes made on server should not affect the client and the changes made on client should not affect the server. So they should be completely independent and not dependent on each other by any means, okay? The next is cache. Now, the client has should have the ability to uh, cache, uh, cache the responses, right? Um, and it should improve the user experience by making them faster and more efficient. So, um, it can st uh, store a lot of information on different uh, sessions, right, user sessions, so that whenever it um, gets uh, the next response, it will be much faster than the previous response because it has already cached some information on the user session, right? So this is how uh, it can make it more faster, uh, the responses which is getting from the server and make the user experience more better. Okay, so coming to the last rule, which is layered approach, right? So every architecture should, every API architecture should have a layered approach, which means there should be different layers, right? Uh, for every, every uh, part of the system. Okay, so, and they should be loosely coupled, right? So what does it mean? For example, if uh, you have an API, right? So the API should be hosted on us on server A, right? The authentication should be uh, processed on server B, and 
the database or the data of that particular API should be stored on server C, right? So there should be different servers, like different layers of your architecture where uh, different parts of the API are available, right? So, and they should be loosely coupled independent of each other, right? So that's the meaning of a layered approach. Uh, every REST API should follow. So these are the different rules which um, makes an API RESTful, right? Now coming to uh, different REST API methods, right? So whenever you work with REST APIs, you will mostly be using these uh, methods. But apart from these, there are other methods as well. But these are the most popular or you can say most useful ones. So the first is the get request, right? So get method, you can say, which helps us to retrieve some information from the server, right? So whenever a client sends a get request, it is expecting some response from the server in the form of some information, right? Now coming to post, uh, method right so it creates a new resource on the server right so whenever we send a post request it is creating a new a new resource on the server to which it is sending this request okay coming to port request so it is a method through which you can update a existing resource on the server right so there's difference between post and put, so don't confuse. Post is to create a new resource and put is to update an existing resource, right? Now delete, as the name suggests, it deletes an API resource or a component on the server, right? Now options, so it will list down all the supported operations on the web service, which is supported by the server, right? So it will list down all the operations head um, it's rarely used but it returns you the http header but it doesn't have any body on the response okay so these are the uh, most frequently used api methods which uh, probably you'll be using while working with rest api um, or uh, rest api testing with postman so if um, to make it easier to understand right so these you can relate to any database queries right so if you have worked with any database you must be sending uh, some queries right so the get request or get method can be attributed to a select query right so when you are sending a select query to a database it is retrieving some information from the database and giving back to you in the form of tables and records right so you can attribute a get method to a select query right now similarly you can um, link all the post put and delete methods to different sql queries or database queries right so delete um, when you are deleting when you're sending a delete uh, query to the server it deletes a table or a stored proc or any other um, database type right so put when you are updating when you are firing an update query right so you are updating some sql table procedure anything right so that's what um, it updates some records on the table right so similarly at um, put request it updates a existing api resource on the server right Similarly, post, right? So post, it is creating a new resource. So post, you can um, attribute to uh, insert query, right? So you are inserting a new table, you are inserting a new row or a new column, right? So uh, these four could be attributed to different database queries to make it um, easier to understand. I gave you this example, right? So you can use this to understand uh, these API methods in a better way. Okay, now coming to uh, SOAP versus REST API. Now, these are the two most popular APIs and this question comes up frequently in interviews and in general, in general sense, right? So uh, we have already seen REST. It stands for a presentational state transfer and SOAP stands for simple object access protocol, right? So 
we have already seen the rules which makes an API RESTful. Uh, but SOAP is mostly a protocol which has an official standard. It was initially developed by Microsoft and it has got a long list of uh, standards which it needs to follow. REST in comparison doesn't have any official standard and uh, it is an architectural style, right? So it has a few rules, but it's not so strict compared to SOAP, right? So that's one of the important uh, differences. Now the other important uh, difference you can note is SOAP uh, requires more bandwidth, uh, but REST requires minimum bandwidth, right? So the performance of REST is pretty good uh, when there is low bandwidth compared to SOAP APIs, okay? Now SOAP APIs are largely based on HTTP and XML. It mostly uses XML, right, um, as a, file type to transmit information, but REST API, it uses multiple standards like HTTP, JSON, URL, XML, right? So there are uh, different types of uh, standards or file types which REST API can use. Okay, um, now SOAP API uh, uses services, interfaces like at web service, right? REST API uh, exposes business logic using URLs at path, right? So generally uh, there will be an endpoint where that particular resource would be located on the server and you can use that endpoint in no URL. So that's how REST API works. SOAP API, um, it uses the WSDL, right? Uh, which is called the Web Services Description Language to develop its APIs. Well, REST API, it uses the Web Application Description Language to just describe functionalities. So these are the different uh, differences uh, which are there for SOAP and REST APIs. So there could be many others, but these are the most important ones, right? So now we have looked at what is an API, what are the different types of API, what are the most popular ones, uh, what is a web services API, we have looked at what is a REST API, how API could be RESTful, uh, what are the difference between SOAP and REST API now. Now we'll be entering into the Postman tool, right? So we'll see how we can set it up, how we can set up the Postman tool, what are the different features of Postman tool, and how we can test our APIs, REST APIs, on the Postman tool. So join me in the next video where we'll talk more about Postman.